Hey guys, we are back updating the power rankings for Survivor 45 following episode 6, the Mergatory episode. And I thought this was a pretty solid episode, which led to a very fun tribal. A lot of really interesting stuff happening there. Now I will say the actual boot was predictable, but the ride there was still a lot of fun and I'm happy to be talking about it. But with all that out of the way, there are 13 players to talk about, and let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. So starting off at number 13, we have the boot from this week, and here we have J Maya. Now I will say that despite the craziness of this tribal, I never had a lot of doubt that J Maya was going to be the boot here. Like she got this confessional right as the merge was happening, where she was comparing the season to a song where the pre-merge was the verse and that now it's going to be the exposition and for me this felt like a visibility spike for J Maya. I felt like a lot of it was going to culminate with her being taken out and sure enough that's what ended up happening here. Now obviously the ride there was a lot of fun where Caleb ended up getting all the votes but through his shot of the dark play it caused a zero votes tribal resulting in a revote and again it felt pretty obvious that she was going to be taken out there. And I feel like in terms of J Maya as a merge boot, I find her game kind of underwhelming where she was largely on the outs for most of the season. I still think her decision to take all the blame for putting the bow on the Sifu when she didn't even do that was pretty ridiculous, especially considering that she thought that he had an idol. I felt like it was pretty suboptimal play there. And obviously this merge round, she was largely expendable where even though Caleb was the primary target here, it made sense for her to be the backup target where people didn't want to make too many ways. We even got some confessionals earlier in the episode by her own Reba members talking about how they would be fine letting her go here. So again, I find her boot to be largely predictable and I find her game to be pretty mediocre and she's here at number 13. And before I continue, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Russell Muscle TV, who I'm partnering up with this season to promote Idle Plays. Idle Plays is an online shop where you can purchase Survivor puzzles so you can practice them and be just like Carson from Survivor 44. We got all different selections here, including the fire puzzle, the snake to the top puzzle, the five piece puzzle that Spencer solved in five seconds from Survivor Cambodia, and more. If you want to take home Survivor puzzles made by super fans for super fans, feel free to Click the link in the description and start shopping now. And with that, there are 12 players left in the game to talk about. And as usual, I'll be ranking them based on how likely I think they are to win based off their edit and current game position. But number 12, we have someone who doesn't shock me too much that they're down here. But here we have Bruce. And I feel like this was a pretty bad episode for Bruce where obviously we see him largely getting dunked on. We see even more people talking about how they're getting annoyed by him and that they're fine letting him go at this point. Again, all this is really bad to the point where it feels like he's probably going to be booted not too long after this. Now, obviously, the one wrinkle in all this is that he does find an idol in this episode. And considering the mergatory round, it didn't make sense for him to be the boo here, as even if he lost the challenge, I feel like he probably just would have played the idol there, as it doesn't make sense when you're one of only six options there. But obviously, we're going to be moving forward now. I think the next episode will be kind of hairy for him considering it will be a split tribal so you would think that he would probably play the idol there but you never know but really this edit is pointing towards him being taken out not too soon afterwards. I feel like it's shown a lot of his flaws and I feel like he has really no redeeming qualities at this point which is why he is here number 12. Now moving on to number 11 and even though this person's still in the bottom of the pack I actually thought this was an all right episode for them and here we have Sifu. Now I will say that this episode as a whole was actually kind of good for Sifu where he gets this nice confessional about how the beginning of the game was all about having fun but now it's psychological warfare and while it's largely a goofy scene where we see him just jumping up on people I do think it could point to a turnaround in his edit though realistically I think it'll probably just lead to him being more of a big character here. I don't really see him winning the game. But again, I do acknowledge that this was a better episode for him. But compared to the other options, I do have to leave him here at number 11. Now moving on to number 10, and we have someone who I've remained very consistent on throughout the season, and here we have Julie. And again, I feel like this was largely more of the same for her. She does get this confessional about how the vote should be simple given the Rebus had the majority, but they know that Jay will turn on them at the first opportunity. I feel like a lot of her content just continues to be pretty surface level, and I feel like there isn't too much depth to it. 
But again, I feel like she has a bit more longevity in the game compared to Sifu, which is why I have her here at number 10. Now I'm moving on to number nine. And I know this person just had a pretty massive episode here and had a pretty big moment. However, I feel like I'm still very low on this person at this point. And here we have Caleb. And obviously Caleb is the star of this episode where he does ultimately use his shot in the dark, successfully nullifying 11 votes, which breaks Wentworth's record for the most votes nullified at a single tribal, which is pretty crazy there. But I think it also ties into why I don't have a ton of faith in him. We're ignoring his edit, which I feel like has been more the same, where he's been shown like being a very strategic player, someone that's probably gonna be a big player in the future. I think this tribal just emphasized to me that he's just really bad at managing his threat level. Like the fact that everyone voted for him at this tribal is really insane and just goes to show that people are already clocking him as a really big threat, which makes me even feel even more confident that he's just gonna be a big player taken out in the mid game pretty much. Now, obviously Emily does vote for him as well, although I feel like that was largely her saving phase in case the shot in the dark play didn't work. So, I mean, you take that for it too well. But still, I feel like we got more of the same from him. And I feel like now I'm a bit less confident in him actually winning, even more so than I was already, when I already was kind of out on him. But I feel like this episode just confirmed to me that he's probably going to be too big of a threat to actually get to the end, which is why he is here at number 9. And now moving on to number 8, and we have another player that I feel largely unchanged by, and here we have Austin, who also got a pretty interesting storyline here of him wanting revenge on Jay Maya and Kelly due to them taking away his sandwich, which I find that whole storyline to be kind of ridiculous as one, he does get a merge feast afterwards, so obviously there's that, but also the fact that even though he does get some moments to explain the more technical strategy behind his move to take out Jay Maya here, where obviously by taking out Jay Maya, it strengthens his amulet, while at the same time taking out someone that could easily flip on their alliance moving forward. The fact that they just focus so much on the sandwich just makes them feel a bit more goofy in my view. I feel like that's probably not the way you want to present it. I feel like you probably want to highlight more of these complexities here. But again, as it is, it's not a terrible edit. He does get his way by the end of it. And I do feel like him taking out Jemiah was probably the correct move, even though he does vote for Caleb initially, but whatever. However, I still feel like he's someone that really lacks a storyline beyond like this one move of taking out Jemaya and getting a revenge, which is why I do have him here at number eight. Now moving on to number seven, and I'm a bit conflicted on this person as I feel like on the surface, this person seemed to have a good episode, though at the same time, I still have some worries about their future prospects. And here we have Kendra. Now I will say that this is probably a better episode for Kendra, at least in terms of her screen time here where she talks about how she was blindsided at this tribal and that she wants revenge on Emily. There's this petty part of her that she can't use in her daily life, but Survivor is the perfect place to let it out. You know, like, and even beyond that, like she talks about during tribal, how everyone's overwhelmed and that they're trying to find their footing. People know that she's a bell strong person and that, you know, like she tells her fellow people about what happened at the tribal where Brando was taken out. So again, she does get more content here, I'm just a little conflicted over whether it's positive content or not, as even though we are getting her perspective on a lot of things, I feel like in other ways she's kind of being undermined as one, she is getting the storyline of a rivalry with Emily, where I feel like Emily is such a major character on the season to where I feel like if that comes to a head, I feel like Emily would be on the winning side of that. And even beyond that, like the fact that she is seemingly committed to the Bellows is probably not the best sign considering how fractured the Bello tribe seems to be at this point, where obviously we have these fractures with the likes of Bruce and Katura. Even Kelly has talked about how she's fed up with Bruce. I feel like this is a largely fractured Bello group, and the fact that she seems to be shown as the Bello strong person does make me a little bit worried about her, but I still acknowledge that this was probably a better episode for her than certain other people, which is why she is here at number seven. Now moving on to number six, and we have another player that I'm a bit conflicted on as well after this episode, and here we have Katura. Now Katura had a pretty quiet episode here, which usually would be a bad thing, as obviously you'd want you know, like a big edit in the merge episode if you are a strong contender, but I guess as a bit of a spoiler alert for the top of the list, 
I feel like a lot of the top contenders didn't get as much screen time as some of these other players, people like a Caleb, for instance, or a Bruce. So I feel like it's not necessarily that big of a nog. I did also question whether her lack of screen time is a negative in the sense that the Bruce storyline did not culminate here, which makes me worry that maybe they are focused a bit too much on Katura's rivalry with Bruce to where that's her only function within the story and they don't really give her much screen time outside of that. Though at the same time, like she also gets this nice confessional about how it doesn't make sense for people like a Bruce to target Caleb here as it would blow up their games. And sure enough, I mean, a lot of it just kind of blows up by the end of it where Caleb is given safety there. Then also, like, they are setting up this Bello and Reba battle. And had they taken out Caleb in that spot, that probably weakens them moving forward. As obviously those Lulus could easily flip over to the Reba side to take them out. So again, I'm kind of conflicted over where Katura stands here. Though at the end of the day, I feel like it's not really enough to fully disqualify her. And plus, with this Bruce storyline still being set up. I still feel like she's going to be on the winning side of it. And plus, it could culminate in the next episode. So we'll have to see what happens there. But for now, I do have her here at number six. Now moving on to number five. And we have another player who I feel like their edit has been more of the same here. Though I could still see how they could turn around in the future. And here we have Kelly. And I feel like Kelly got more of the same here. A lot of it was mostly strategic content where she was talking about how like she's fed up with Bruce and that she'd be fine blindsiding him. She would also be happy taking out JMI in this round as it would weaken Reba and it would strengthen her and Austin's amulets. However, a knock to that is that I feel like Austin's probably on the right side of that where obviously Austin talks about getting his revenge for not getting a sandwich and getting his way by taking out JMI. And while Kelly didn't get as much focus in that, I could also see Austin like furthering that storyline by taking out Kelly as well to ensure that his amulet becomes a full-fledged idol. So I do worry for her in that regard. But even beyond that, like, I feel like as we have seen in more episodes, she's been getting a lot of strategic content, but not as much personal content as I would like. Now, I feel like compared to these other big players, people like a Caleb, I feel like we definitely have seen a bit more of Kelly due to her talk about being a nurse, but it still makes me worry that she could still fall into that mold at this point. And plus with her, again, getting quite a bit of screen time, it wouldn't surprise me if she were like a surprise early merge boot as early as the next episode. They'll have to see what happens there. So I'm not entirely out on Kelly either, though I am a bit conflicted about her merge episode here, which is why she's here number five. Now moving on to number four, and this person also got what I expected from them in this episode, and here we have Drew. And again, as a decoy winner, I felt like Drew got what you would expect, where he got a Pretty typical solid merge episode here talking about how like he has a core alliance and that he's in a good spot. He likes being the leader and that if he can squash out certain targets right now, that would be great. He doesn't want to play buddy buddy and even talks down to his fellow players for goofing off in the merge when the merge is the stage of the game where you're supposed to be elevating yourself to the next level. So I feel like that's all pretty good. He also talks about the merge feast and how it lowers people's guards to where they're more willing to talk game. Again, it's largely what you would expect, though not enough to change my view of him as him being this big player, this player that's eventually going to be the king of the game, and with that, someone to take him out. So not much to really change my view on Drew here, but again, I feel like he's still gonna be in it for a decent amount, which is why he is here at number four. Now moving on to number three, and we actually have the highest ranked man left in the game. In theory, we have Jake. And Jake is another player that has been creeping up on my power rankings every week, as even though he's not like someone getting as big of an edit compared to other players, he's still someone that I think at least has a shot of winning. He actually gets a somewhat decent merch episode here where he talks about him like coming up with his ruse to help Bruce get the idol, which I thought was pretty funny. And then later on, like he talks about how he's scared to go to tribal, that it's his first tribal and that he needs to save himself, which felt pretty unnecessary considering he was never really in that much danger based off the edit, but it's still good that we're at least hearing his perspective here. Admittedly, it's not the flashiest merge episode in the world. I mean, I feel like Drew got a more stereotypical uh, edit for a merge episode for a winner. Though I feel like with the new era, I feel like Jake could definitely surprise some people. He's been getting more consistent content here and hasn't really been as undercut as much as other players, which is why I have him this on the list. 
Though I feel like the top contenders still remain for me, which is why I leave him here at number three. Now moving on to number two, and it is the same top two as last week. And it's actually the same order as last week. And here we have Emily. And again, I feel like this was a mostly good episode for Emily here. She explains her vote from the last tribal where she sided with the Rebus due to them making her feel like she was brought into a team versus being pushed around by others. We do see her also talking with Bruce and how she apologizes to him. Though at the same time, while Bruce does say that he doesn't really forgive her, she also gets to say that just because she thinks she can move forward with Bruce doesn't mean she can move forward with him in an alliance. So again, she still gets her perspective there later on. Like she is given a lot of credit here for telling Caleb that he's the target. And in turn, like mentioning the shot in the dark, which I feel like leads to Caleb using a shot in the dark there. And yes, while well, she does technically vote for Caleb at that tribal, that was mostly to save face. And I'm sure that's something Caleb would understand as well, given the circumstances. So again, I feel like this was a good episode for her. And even with this new rivalry setup between her and Kendra, that's mostly one sided. I still feel like Emily is going to be on the winning side of that. So while there are definitely some worries in terms of people like a Bruce or Kendra potentially coming for her down the road, I feel like Emily has been established as someone that will clearly win out in those battles. And even with Caleb, we get that setup of Caleb and Emily reuniting and that they're seen as his partnership. Kayla gets to talk about how she has grown into her own and that she is largely the product of his mentorship, which I feel like furthers that storyline of her growing as a player until she eventually outgrows him. I feel like she is going to be the one to take out Caleb at some point, which is also in her favor. I still think there are a lot of things going for Emily, I feel like, which is why I do have her here at number two. And now at number one, the person I believe is the most likely to win Survivor 45 right now is still D. And I feel like this was, again, another good enough merge episode for D. She gets to talk about her alliance as they're merging together. She's glad that they're all still together and that Drew and Austin are the ones that she trusts the most. She'll vote out anyone except for them. You know, like, and obviously later on, we see her talking about voting out Jay and that voting out Jay Maya won't, wouldn't burn any bridges between Reba and Bello and that she wasn't close to Jay Maya to begin with. Again, not the flashiest merge episode in the world, not the biggest edit there, but we still get some time for her to explain her strategy. And I feel like the fact that we do establish her alliance right away as the merge is happening goes to show that that will be a major force moving forward, which obviously benefits her quite a bit. Again, I still worry a bit with Emily in terms of her dropping off, which is why I still give the edge to D over Emily, though I still feel pretty confident both of them. I'm pretty confident that they're still the two most likely people to win the season. But again, I feel like D got just enough in this episode to where I still probably lean her over Emily, which is why she is here at number one. And there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Really helps out with the channel. And I'll be back again next week to update the Power Rankings again, so you can stay tuned for that. I am still covering Big Brother 25, The Amazing Race 35, and Survivor UK, so you can expect weekly Power Rankings of those shows. I am now on Patreon, so if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And if you haven't already, you can also join the Discord server by also clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way, but for now, that is the video. See ya.